So it's OGM 2025, and we want to see what is the future state from a foodie's perspective. So what is the challenge with, as we are seeing it today in 2020? The remaining carbon budget is an astonishing four years. This was taken in 2018, when we had 193 billion tons left, with an average annual consumption of 37 billion metric tons, leaving us six years then, four years now. Very difficult to see how we're going to make that. The concept of carrying capacity. Today, with 7.8 billion people, we're using roughly 1.7 times the reproductive capacity of the planet. We're actually depleting the ecological capital while we are increasing the demand on it. 8.6 billion people by 2030, 9.8 billion people by 2050. So what are our options? So there are two macro levers we can pull. One is energy, well understood, well underway, way too slow. And then there's photosynthesis, which is now coming into focus, which is the capacity of plants you know, to turn sunlight you know, into carbon, into nutrients for the soil. Soil health is a topic too complicated to talk about you know, in, in 10 seconds here. Um, but it is the foundation of life. There is no life uh, without uh, living soil. Um, soil is also uh, the depository of carbon. Uh, so for us to have any chance to get carbon back out of the atmosphere sequestered, it has to go into the soil. So bringing the options down to a specific sector, the food system, what do we see here? There is now solid science around the concept of regenerative agriculture and regenerative land management that defines how we can restore soil back to health and how we can sequester gigatons of carbon out of the atmosphere, basically neutralizing humanity's current output. Again, a huge topic that requires a separate conversation. The challenge we have here is that regeneration of soil depends entirely on local conditions of soil, climate, water, and socioeconomics, so it has to be customized. That implies the types of seeds being used, crops, crop rotations, and so on, which in turn shakes up the entire market, you know, because the supply chain is currently not configured to deal with this. So there is an enormous reluctance for the industry to adapt here because they simply don't know how to do it at this point. So we're in 2025. And we're looking back to what happened, what did we do in 2020. OGM documented and prioritized best available science and evidence-based risk factors impacting the global ecosystem. OGM partnered with sector level experts to define and document strategic regenerative outcomes for specific sectors of the economy to prevent systemic failures in the ecosystem. Very important to think about because there is so much discord and so much confusing, uh, misleading information uh, in the uh, in the in the marketplace. So to have a to develop a depository that is trusted. OGM structured itself as a consultant to consultants researching and documenting at macro level best available regenerative practices, including centers of excellence examples in selected core sectors of the economy, to be the go-to place where the information is researched, it's solidified, it's trustworthy. OGM advanced the sustainability development goals into a global systems model and mapped interdependencies between sectors of the economy. OGM summarized the impact of specific sustainability development goals, compliance steps in targeted business sectors, defining most likely to succeed outcomes within whole systems context. Right now, the SDGs are basically 100 line items. The top 20 line items, 10 of them are related to the food system. There is no systemic uh, understanding of how these individual steps interrelate to each other. There is even less understanding how what happens in food would impact, let's say, the energy sector, the logistics sector, and so on. So to develop a systems map 
around the SDGs is the single most important task in my mind that OGM could accomplish at this point.